live on the interwebs. I'm uh, I'm Hank Strange, your host today, and I've got my friends Alex C from the Firearm Blog. Alex, I don't know. This is this, is this your first time being on a live hangout, Alex? Alex, Alex this is this is oh, cool. I'm looking Very forward good. to it. All right, awesome. And I've got my friend. Yes, sir. This is Green. Christian Green is next up. He is from Green Force Tactical. You can go ahead and wave to the to people out in the interwebs. I have to wave with both hands. I don't know which one's on camera. There you go. <laughs> Pretty much everyone on this hangout has never been on a live hangout before, except me. I've also got my my good buddy Jacob Herman from Century Arms. What's up? I've now, also I've also never been on a Google Hangout. Yeah. So me neither, brother. This is gonna be probably a fiasco, but. Whatever, we'll have fun. All right, and I'm trying to get some other some other people in here. We'll see whether or not we get them in. You know, we decided to do this hangout tonight to talk about Century Arms is importing the Canic TP9 SA, and uh, yes. there's, there's been some controversy about the D Cocker. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up my my TP9. There goes my TP9 that I got as a TNE from Century Arms. Oh, there we go. I made it pop. Yeah, and this thing right here up top, the decocker, push it down. It it takes it from. Uh, see, I don't know if you guys can see this out there, but right now there's a red dot in there. I don't know whether or not you can see it. And when you press the decocker, that decocks it. So there's some folks out there that think that you know what? That's going to cause some troubles for them, Jacob. So you I've know heard what? that. I've yeah, heard so that. Yeah. Since since you're the guest of honor, first of all, what what I want to do is I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself. You know how you wound up in this gun business, etc. Um, you know it's it's you know my grandpa had a bait and tackle shop, so I grew up in the outdoor business, and uh, I always liked guns, and always you know wanted to hunt when I was little, which was just a byproduct of I wanted a new gun. I could you know didn't really want to go deer hunting because it was cold. Um, so I, uh, you know, went from there, worked at some gun stores, worked at the outpost, which is Chris Barrett's gun store, Barrett Firearms, uh, when I was in college. And I went from there to the National Rifle Association, did some grassroots, what they call a grassroots coordinator, community, uh, organizer. Same thing that Barack Obama does. Yep. And uh, except for the, except for the right, you know, the, the right side, the side that loves freedom. And, uh. Went from there to uh, down in uh, another firearms manufacturing company and uh, just kind of bounced around for a while and kept moving up, and now I'm at Century Arms. Okay, very cool. Moving on and, uh, up. You've been at Century Arms for how long now? Um, 15 months. 15 months. 15 months, I know. It's amazing. It amazes everyone that knows me. Yeah. I just like the weather here in Florida. Yeah. Now, where are you from originally? Cause Tennessee. Tennessee. Yep. Okay. Yep. Finest state in the union. I'm feeling the accent. Don't get mad at me if I try to mimic your accent, because you know. Uh, it'll be funny. I would appreciate that. We call love, it mocking. I love accents. So, I, you know, I don't know how that one went, but whatever. That didn't okay. sound like me at all, actually. But you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably well, not. You know. Gonna... I only get your accent when I'm talking about you to other people, and then I go, this is what Jacob said to me. So, here, you want me to do, want me to do you, you? Here we go. Jacob goes, Hank Strange, I don't think you like me very much. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> so, there you go. That's my, that's my uh, try of you. Okay, so, now, quickly tell us, where does the TP9SA come from? Uh, obviously, it's a Canic, right? Right. So, hopefully everyone has watched me on YouTube because I like to think that people watch videos with me in it because they like to hear me talk. But uh, the TP9SA comes from Turkey. It's made by a company called Canic. Uh, Century and Canic has had a relationship for a very long period of time. And when they came out with the TP series pistol, we kind of latched onto that. And we said, you know, we're going to bring this to North America. We're going to do the sales service, handle all the warranty work. And so we handle that for North America for Canic. So Century does all the import, all the sales of the TP series pistol. 
And so we've kind of taken this on and we help do some design work, you know, change stuff up for the American market, uh, what the American shooter wants, and that's kind of how we ended up with the TP9SA. Oh, okay, so the gun was originally created for who in Turkey? Uh, the Turkish military, when Turkey joined NATO, they decided to develop a pistol program. And that pistol program, obviously, uh, they wanted to do it in-house instead of doing it, uh, buying other countries' guns. So they developed this pistol in the country of Turkey, all in-house, the engineering, everything's done there. It's got a lot of qualities of other handguns, but the facility is an ISO certified facility, the same certification that all factories here in America use. And it has a NATO certification to be a NATO handgun, so it's approved for NATO service as well. Okay, so in Turkey, they're running the gun as it is in the TP9 SA format, right, with the decocker? The, the military and police units, yeah, they're running it with the, uh, the decocker on it. Okay. And there's so, some other, so there's some countries in South America that use it, that issue it. Uh, a lot of countries in the Middle East, some African countries, all issue it as a standard military issue sidearm right alongside, you know, the other mainstream manufacturers. Okay. So now, obviously, I think folks out there like it because of the price. This is a sub-$400 gun. Right. Good gun, too. Um, you know, so what I'm... What I'd like to know is, other than the, the good stuff that you obviously would pay attention to when that comes in, are you getting any negative feedback on the gun? Uh, you know, a lot of stuff is, uh, the main negative feedback is the decocker. And, you know, people either really love it or they really hate it. And sales are proving that most people really, really like it. You know, we're continuously backordered. Every shipment of these guns that comes in has been spoken for for several weeks. Um, it's a pretty popular piece. Um, besides that, nobody can really, nobody that shoots one, let me put it that way, there's a lot of haters. There's a lot of haters on the internet, but they don't own one, and they've never fired one. So really, they don't have any qualifications to talk about it, just conjecture. That'd be like asking me how I like flying a spaceship, when I've, and obviously no one would let me ever do that. If anyone does, I would like to fly it. Uh, the decocker, though, yeah, I say so what? Not even once in Vegas? No, no spaceships. No, no. But, uh, you know, that's the biggest complaint, Hank, was the, uh, is the decocker and uh, on top of the pistol. And luckily for the haters, we've got the TP9SF coming out. Uh, that'll be a SHOT Show next year, and it doesn't have a decocker on it. Okay. Threaded barrel? Threaded barrel? Uh, there'll be th we'll have threaded barrels out hopefully around July. Okay, so you're coming out with a version next year that's basically going to be the TP9. It's going to be single action or double action? Or it's going to be just like the SA, except it won't have a decocker. So we'll still have both handguns. We'll still have the handgun with the decocker and the handgun without the decocker. Uh, okay, you know, a lot of people like the decocker because it's, it's, it helps take the gun down, and it means yep. the gun's a lot safer when you go to clean it. Right. So um, are, you, are you guys coming out with that version specifically because people have issues with the decocker? Or you just uh, no, no, that was just kind of a, an in-route, uh, in-line version that we knew we were going to come out with before this pistol ever hit the market, actually. Um, okay. We have not heard from anyone that says, hey, my decocker uh, kept me from winning a gunfight, or my decocker uh, has accidentally decocked the pistol. Uh, you know, it's an administrative task. That's, the, that's what we use the decocker for. When we uh, teach people to take the pistol apart, we teach them to hit the decocker to make sure the gun's safe. You take the pistol down so you don't have any possibility of uh, having an accident. Okay, so let me go over to my friend Alex from the Firearm Blog. Alex, have you guys had any experience with the uh, TP9SA? Aside from handling them at the SHOT Show, not really, although we were overwhelmingly impressed with what the Turks were able to produce, especially with shots a... I don't want to say short-lived arms industry. They've been making military firearms for, you know, since military firearms have been made, so it's spanning back hundreds of years. Um, but in the modern military uh, sense, I'm very impressed with what not just Canon <laughs> has turned out, but other companies like MKE. Um, I think the Turks have their head on straight when it comes to this particular firearm, and I think I speak for everyone else when I say I can't wait to get my hands on my T&E unit and run the absolute dog crap out of it. Okay, cool. So on on uh, the firearm blog, are you guys getting any kind of feedback, anything coming in from people having issues or anything like that? As far as issues, no. I think everybody's anxious to, to like I said, get their hands on one. 
because I, you know, like most people, especially our readers, I'm hesitant to to make an opinion of a firearm unless I can put my hands on it, or right. at the very least, I'm experienced watching someone who knows what they're doing run it rather than through a video or something. Because, you know, as we all know, videos often show the best of what something has to showcase rather than uh, the real deal. I know Hank and other YouTube personalities don't do that, but um, unfortunately, there are some people out there that do. So. I really look forward to getting the teeny unit, and like I said, running it until uh, until I'm satisfied, and that entails a, a high round count. Okay, so now that so having uh, Jacob here, do you have any questions or anything like that? Anything you'd like to know? Um, you know, as far as uh, as far as the Turks facility over there, how would you rate their QC when it comes to what? you guys have experienced in the past with other companies, or uh, rather other countries? Um, the uh, Well, that's easy to answer because it's an ISO facility. So when okay. you talk about an ISO facility, you know, that facility is qualified and that facility is NATO certified to build arms for NATO. So they have one of, the, you know, if you look at plants around the world, that Turkish facility ranks right up there with any mainstream arms facility in Europe. And that's why this gun can compete head to head with anything, any full size nine millimeter on the market. Uh, one of the interesting things, like the these guns are are, are have a, a ceramic style finish on them, and uh, the guy that actually runs the coating process that coats all these guns, he has a PhD in polymer coatings. Um, <laughs> the guy that molds the plastic has a PhD in plastic. The the guys that that make the that make the trigger parts. I mean, they all have PhDs in engineering, and so when you walk in there, everyone in the building that effectively has a has a PhD in their chosen field. So they build a, an excellent an excellent product. Um, a, a lot of the QC because of the I guess the cost of labor in Turkey, you know, they can afford to put a lot of time on each gun, and then uh, and that's why we've had you know, <clears throat> out of the thousands of guns we've shipped, we've had. Uh, I think two or three guns returned out of like 9,000 units, and it was a uh, this uh, like a spring. We just changed changed the spring inside of it, and they went right back out. There was no major fault of the gun itself. Well, that's excellent. You know, I'd like to emphasize to to people who would maybe maybe view that as a negative thing that every pistol, when it comes out, has problems. I mean, look at the Beretta M9. That was a huge controversy when you had slides cracking and flying back. And right. Back. I saw that so, happen. It was by bad. just having a few. Right, just having a few pistols come back for a spring issue, I'd say that's pretty good for. Well, a, when you've got a three pistols out of nine thousand, eight thousand, nine thousand pistols, that's a, and it has a lifetime warranty. You know, we have a lifetime warranty behind it. Uh, we had guys come over from Turkey, and they actually trained our trainers in the facility, so we can do full depot level factory maintenance. We effectively have all the tools, jigs, parts here, just like the factory does. So we service these to factory specifications. If something was to ever happen to it, is that um, lifetime warranty transferable, or is it just for the first purchaser? Uh, you have to register it. We ask that everybody sends in a little card to register the pistol uh, okay. with us. If I buy it um, used, and get that I did lifetime. not send the card. Say so what, Christian? I did not send the card. Yeah, you don't. I wouldn't honor yours anyway because I know what you do to them. Um, <laughs> very, very, uh, very, my, very, very, my thing. sample gun. My my first sample gun had a, I've got 7,300 rounds through it now. Um, everybody in the country shot it. Uh, it's the same one I shot the first video with the Jaeger. Um, a lot of guys have handled that particular pistol. Um, we sent Tactical Response a set of guns and they put them in the uh, rental program. And so instead of students renting a Glock, they can use a TP9 SA for free. And from what I understand, there have been zero issues out of that as well. Okay. All right. Very cool. I I have shot the dog shit out of this one. And uh, Alex, we did a. Um, we don't know shit about doing YouTube and reviews and shit, but we got hooked up with Masad Ayub over in Lake City, and uh, he pretty much put us to school for how to do a video review. So if you're looking for somebody that knows what they're doing handling one, we've got a uh, we got a video up with Masad Ayub and John Strayer uh, handling it, talking about it, measuring it, shooting the shit out of it. So yeah. I'm up to like 20, 2,500 with no cleaning on this one. And uh, it's That's probably cool. had 35 or 40 holsters smashed on it, um, a dozen this week. So it's holding up really good. I took it out and shot it right before we came on online to make sure uh, make sure I hadn't done anything too rude to it. But very cool. Dog very shit cool. out of it, man. 
Yeah. That is now, awesome. that, that brings me to a point. Um, you guys do have a very good video, Christian. I, I, I really enjoyed that video. And Masad Ayub, I mean, I've never seen a more detailed YouTube gun review <laughs> than what Masad Ayub did. I mean, I was really impressed by that. And I've got, and I got a question from the Adventure Cowboy, my, my buddy. He wants to know. He wants everyone here to say what your different channels and stuff like that are so that he could check you out. So uh, I'm going to start with you, Christian. What what's How can people get in touch with you social media-wise? Uh, you can get us on Facebook at Green Force Tactical. You can get us at the www at uh, greenforcetactical.com. We've got a YouTube channel. Um, I take no responsibility for what's on the channel. Um, it's Green Force Tactical as well. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. Ask Chad. Yeah, a ask Chad. That's really a Chad question, or more specifically, a Cinder question. She, uh, if she Chad from Green Force Tactical was here, Christian, I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, uh, social media education right now. If someone asks you what your .com is, you don't do the www. You know? You just, w. <laughs> yeah. You w, just, w, W, I got them water magic wild webs coming on over here, on here in the woods. You just, yeah, yeah. I'm just making fun of you, but you just you could just say greenforestactical.com. That works pretty good. So Chad's no. probably going to get you for that one. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he's, he's he, he called me on the phone right before he started, and he's like, what are you doing, what are you doing, what are you doing, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, I'm not building anything. He's like, oh. I'm like, well, we're doing the Google Hangout thing with Jacob and Hank and you know some other dudes, and he's like, Oh, uh, I don't want to be in it, but like, uh, could you send me a link? Yeah. Sure. Just don't embarrass him. That's probably what. So are happening. people actually watching this? Oh yeah, people are watching really? this right now. It's going out live. <laughs> live on the interwebs. The WW. I'm doing it on my phone, so if somebody sees my finger, that's why I'm trying to like control everything at once. Yeah, hey, I did the whole Masada Ayub video on the phone. Okay, they, we had a. We know. We watched it. We had yeah, an audio-visual failure, and luckily I had yeah. my Samsung with me with the... So Christian makes Christian makes the holster I carry, my TP9N. Yeah, they make a lot of holsters. So here's my here's my TP9 holster that I got from Green Force Tactical. I actually oh, that's got, a sporty one. I've got... Here we go. So here I've got... Uh, this is an outside the waistband. This is inside the waistband. That's a got super some cool stuff. Shed. Yeah, absolutely. Now let me go to Alex. Alex, how do guys get in touch with you? Or what's your social media stuff? Uh, I'm the senior writer for the Firearm Blog, so if you get on the firearmblog.com and type in Alex C, I'll pop up. Um, alternately, you can email me at acaps at gocaps.com. Uh, lastly, we do have a YouTube channel called TFB. That's for the Firearm Blog TV. So TFB TV, that's our channel. Yeah, very cool. Um, is that a promotion you just got, Alex? <laughs> Because the last I'm time sorry? I saw you, the last time I saw you, were you the senior writer? Is that a promotion or what's going on? Yeah, there? I've been the senior writer for probably seven or eight months now. Oh, okay. um, I've been with the blog for uh, over three years, so it's been a fun, uh, fun ride. And then awesome. TFP TV is a new project. It's only, uh, only about a month and a half long. Okay, so I look forward to that, man. Uh, and and you and I are going to be doing some stuff, so you know we can't really talk Absolutely. about. It. Because we're we're in negotiations right. with Alex's agent and then my agent, you know, and his people have to call my people, kind of thing. But you you I wish agent. it was that important, but really, yeah. My intern's gone for the summer, so I'm I'm helpless. Your hype man? Where'd your hype man go? He he had to go back to school. What did he chew his chain off his leg or something? Yeah, he uh, he escaped. I let him out. <laughs> if he's still so in what, Florida, I got people, man. We can run him down. So how do people get in touch with you? How do people get in touch with you, Jacob? Um, you can call the office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so I I also want to be an Instagram star, right? So I have an Instagram. It's uh, it's it's M K A T G nineteen. And uh, what the what the sorry, good good sorry. So it's uh so no cussing on the internet, Christian. We talked about it. My grandmother doesn't like it. Um, it's uh my Instagram handle is mkatg19, and I do have a, a Facebook, you know, like a Facebook public um, fan page that I post cool stuff on, where people can follow my uh, daily travels and not creep on my personal page. Okay, so you're not. So what? Okay, what about Century Arms? I mean, do you guys have YouTube channel? I must say, Paris was awesome. 
Facebook. I mean, what's I yeah? We got like, since so Century has Century has a new website right that's coming out sometime in the next uh, three to ten days. So that'll be CenturyArms.com. Uh, we have an Instagram Century Arms, uh, and we have a Facebook page that that pretty much everything goes down on all the product releases. Uh, this was on there. Any kind of events we do, we post on Facebook. People can come by and talk to us. Okay, cool. Now I've got a question. Lola gave me a question that's coming in from the YouTubes or something. And folks out there want to know: Can you disconnect the decocker on the TP9 SA? And is that a good idea? Or is it safe to do that? So, as a Century employee, I have to tell you that we don't recommend ever um, modifying or disconnecting any kind of safety feature on a firearm. That's that's just a bad idea all the way around, and we, we recommend people not do that. Um, so I would say, no, don't do that from the factory, and that's kind of the official line. Is there's Decocker's on there for a reason. You know, it's to help you take the gun apart, hit the decocker, take the pistol apart. It works out a lot better in the long run. Um, there's no reason to decock the pistol and carry it around. You know, it's it's a it's a administrative task. Uh, the other thing is is you know when uh, we have more lines coming out, there'll be a, a version available without a decocker, and you can pick that one up and and not even have to worry with it. Jacob, when uh, when I demonstrate that gun or show it to anybody, that's not a decocker. That's part of the takedown assembly. Push the push the first part of it. You pull the second part of it. You disassemble the gun. We never. Say well, I under, I I'm tracking with you. I think the manual calls it a decocker. That was kind of the problem. We lost that. Uh, I know. I don't. I exactly. But you should read it. Always safety first, right? You should read your manual before you operate a firearm or motor vehicle or airplane or an airplane. And, uh, and so, if people mess around. You know, if people mess around and do things like that, basically, you guys, if anything goes wrong, you're not liable for that. Right? right. We, we, you know, say that people should not touch their safeties or mess with the safety devices on any firearm. Bad. Okay. Very cool. Now, you know what? Let me get to one quick, uh, quick question that I'm getting from Oliver Bishop. It's a little bit off this particular uh, subject, but it's on the subject of ammo. We've got like the ammo ban and all that kind of stuff going on. So anyone out there, any one of you guys here on the panel that has uh, any info on this, he says, uh, Oliver Bishop says, can anyone let me know how to go about buying over 10,000 rounds per caliber for bulk buying? Big credit card. Yeah, d does he need to go to a gun shop or get them from uh, ammo manufacturer? What does he need to do? I guess, you know, ammo is selling out out there, so... You want to currently buy 10,000 rounds as in you need it right now? At, like you can't yeah, that's what space he's it out? Or you, yeah. Uh, yeah. If a, legally, if a place has it in stock, they can sell you as much ammo as your, as your card will you know, take. Um, yep. I'm an FFL SOT, and uh, I run a small operation. And if you wanted 10,000 rounds and I had it on hand, absolutely nothing stops it from selling it to you for personal use. Run that card. Yeah. Run the car. I would gladly sell you 10,000 rounds of ammunition if you were willing to buy it from me. That's right. That's right. So is it available? I mean, what's going on right now? I, I've seen, like, when I go to my local store, they've got ammo. It doesn't seem like there's any rush going on. Although I've heard that um, a, a lot of retailers are, are pretty much ordering as much as they can get right now, anticipating that there is going to be a run. You know, what are you guys seeing out there? Um, I'm seeing a run on pretty much everything around me locally, um, especially anything with an M855 slash SS109 projectile. All that stuff's pretty much gone from store shelves. Has to be expected. Um, but that's now extending on to 308. I don't know who decided that 308's getting lumped in with a ban when they haven't mentioned it. I'm seeing 762 by 39 go. Um, anything that comes in a spam can seems to go immediately as soon as it hits the floor. I don't know why that is. I guess it has something to do with the 7 and 6 band a while back, but that's just what I've seen locally here in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area in Texas. Okay. Maybe people are just spontaneously buying more ammo because they heard the word ban, as is often the case. Yeah, and I think some people out there are not as uh, keyed in as we are to the specific news that, okay, maybe it's the green tip or whatever, and they're just hearing, hey, there's another Russian ammo, and they're going out there and just getting whatever they can get their hands on. Hank, I've got kind of an odd thought on this ammo thing. Um, 
Mm-hmm. You got a se- you got a second? I'll lay. I, I just sitting here. It occurs to me that the uh, the green tip ban is kind of the karmic correction return for when they banned seven and six, and you know all the AR-15 owners went, "Oh, it doesn't affect me. I'm I'm not shooting that evil commie shit stuff." Sorry, Jacob. And uh, now they come back around the next year, and they're banning the uh, the green tip, and now all the AR-15 people are going, "Well, shit, this affects me." Ah, but. You know, so well, that's the definition. Kind of a right. Karmic I mean, return, you know, big wheel yeah, of the well, sky. I mean, right. Hank, we sell a ton of ammo um, at Century. I mean, we sell, you know, well over three hundred million rounds a year. That red army and, uh, standard's good shit, Jacob. Right, and we sell three hundred eight, and and we've seen an uptick in three hundred eight as well. Um, now, one of the things that I think is causing that is there was no good cheap 308 on the market for a while, and you were seeing ball 308 at a buck around. So it's come down more reasonable. It's in the, you know, the 75, the 60 to 75 cents for new production. People are grabbing it up because you know they they see a a little a lull in the market. Um, nine millimeters come down. You know, at one time nine millimeters 350, 360, 375 a case, and now we see a price drop in that. Um, people are buying what's available. You know, and right now M855 SS109 is the hot thing, but that was a slow mover for a long time because it's just not that effective of a round overall. People are just buying it out of panic. And it's All being, that I have is target ammo. Um, you're not if you, they see you have green tip stuff in your bag, they'll make you empty all your magazines to make sure that their back stops are okay. So that's right. one of the reasons I'm a slow seller around, at least in my part of the part of the country. I used it for. Uh, training ammo. I, it just it shoots good, but I'm not going to throw it at like a, a humanoid target or a car. There's better options available. You're um, absolutely but right. What I have is just it's just randomly mixed in. I don't treat it like oh this is the good shit. No, it's <laughs> they just had me banning some target ammo I have laying around for two years. A lot and, of and honestly, it's not AP ammo. It, it's no. not true armor piercing ammo. No. It's a it's a surplus ammunition. It's by the way it's designed that it's you know has a piece of steel on it and uh, really it's just arbitrary ATF rulings to limit you know being able to purchase certain kinds of ammo just like 545 that they banned the 7 and 6 is not it's not real armor piercing ammo. ammo yeah it's not real armor piercing ammo so you know there's some petitions going around the best thing everybody can do is you know to fight any kind of ammunition or gun ban is a uh, sign the petitions if it's going around. Join the NRA. Listen to ILA. You know, and there's petitions and contact your congressman. Everybody that watches a gun video on YouTube, I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of subscribers. If every single one of those people would go on the NRA website and download the form and basically fill it out on their computer that says, "Dear Congressman Blackburn, Dear Congressman So and So," and send that in and flood the Capitol with mail, not an email, but an actual piece of paper. Uh, there would most of this would end overnight because they would see how many how much people demand that they stop doing this. Um, Jacob, my I, I have to tell you with some shame that my congresswoman is uh, Sheila Jackson Lee. You should Ooh. still send her a letter. Oh, I do, I do, I do. Yes, I've I've had that phone call. Please. Stop. Every gun owner should write a letter to their congressman once a week and put a stamp on it. If yep. you know stamps are fifty two cents, there's fifty two weeks. If you can't spend. Twenty-five dollars a year on your freedom, then you probably don't deserve it. Yeah, and That's if you've right. got people like Sheila Jackson Lee in your thing, try to vote them out. Last yeah. phone call I had with her staffer was that I was going to <laughs> find out who was running against her, campaign for that person, and uh, put yard signs up for that person all over the county. And uh, the last conversation I had with her was, "That's fine, just don't call here anymore." Yeah. Well, here's something. You know, um, <laughs> I was trying to get my friend Mike Deddy that wrote this book guns across the border and this you know this is based on his experience with the ATF you know when we had the whole gun walking thing going on right and uh, you know the ATF is gonna keep doing stuff like this the more we let them get away with the more they're gonna keep pushing it you know and the politicians people in office are gonna keep using that as a device to eventually uh, in, in my opinion if they can get away with it, with it they'll try to disarm us and what we have to do is push back against that, you know? Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I did uh, local law enforcement, and I did the um, 
the deal where the feds come in and send you to like two weeks worth of school and give you like federal paperwork and say, hi, you're cross-designated. And I did task force work for a while in South Florida, and I can tell you from my interactions with the federal government that we called them accountants with guns, and we were always having NDs and ADs and shooting their cars and, you know, ridiculous stuff. But, um, yeah, they take somebody with a college degree, say, you're a cop, here you go, have a nice day, go to Flea Tech, don't shoot yourself with a Serpa, and off you go. So it's academics with badges for the most part, at least in my experience. So, um, yeah, they'll, they're bureaucrats. They'll do whatever they can to make their bureaucracy bigger and more powerful to justify their jobs for the next physical year. You know, that's pretty much how that works. Yeah. Spend it all or you don't get any more next year. Yeah, uh, bureaucrats always want to please whatever politicians in power. Alex, what is this a still? You know, you, you're you're running a blog. Is this still a hot story? Is it heating up? What, you know, where do you? What's the trajectory of this? Uh, it's still going to be. It's drawing a tremendous amount of views, mostly from people who aren't even interested in, in firearms. I would say it's. We're seeing traffic from, you know, other linked sites around the, the around the U.S. and stuff that. You know, people are just finding an excuse like to hate on the Democrats and President Obama are clicking and saying, oh, well, this is clearly Obama's fault, whereas actually he realistically might not have even known about it until some ATF staff person or something mentioned it the other day. This is completely in the ATF's jurisdiction. The president has absolutely, you know, minimal control over this. Obviously, you can appoint the head of the ATF, but I would like to emphasize that if you're going to make comments heard, you know, get them in the right department. I mean, you know, if you want to, if you want to comment on the space program, you you make comments to NASA, not the DPS. Yeah, it's not just, um, right. Yeah, so, right, not the Department of Agriculture. Right. I've so got it's, a it's just go ahead. You have people who aren't in firearms getting getting heated up about this debate, which is it's kind of cool though too to see that um, it's it's expanded outside of just a small segment of the population who only care about. The Second Amendment now. Yeah, I think what's you know this is just my conjecture of what I think is happening. You had all these people when there was the run on guns that went out and bought guns, and they might be paying just a little bit more attention now, and they're thinking, okay, so what's happening? They're trying to you know ban bullets, <laughs> you know, and they're and they're they're um you know they're the tuning, yeah, they're tuning into what's going on out there, which is not really a bad thing, you know, if they get educated. And figure out what's going on, and realize that some of the voting they've done in the past, what uh, <coughs> it is, what's leading to that. Then you know we may get some changes. Um, I've got a question here from MSM ninety eight nine zero eight, and he wants to know what we all here on the panel are doing about this madness, and what we're doing to stop it. So I'll start with Jacob. Are you, are you, what are you doing to stop the madness, Jacob? Are you talking about the madness of the M855? Yes. Ammo? Well, yes, I mean, right now, right now it's in a it's it's not, you know, it's it's not one person. It's you there it's a comment period, right? So they've not banned it, they've not taken it off the market. We're in an ATF comment period and we have seen a time that the ATF is is open for comments and it worked, you know, if everybody writes a letter um to the ATF, and there's plenty of forms online. There's petitions you can sign online. You can go to NRA, ILA uh, website. They have forms, and, and honestly, there's a. I mean, all you have to do is Google, and it'll tell you exactly what to write. You need to send a letter to both your senators, all your congressmen, um, and you need to send in a letter to the ATF where it has the exact address and who to address it to to send that letter in with your comments and make it concise and say, you know, it's not armor piercing ammo. It's plinking ammo. You know, this is, it's not AP under any kind of law, and, you know, that will eventually, we hope, uh, turn the tide on this. Okay, very good. You got anything to add to that, Christian? Abolish the ATF? <laughs> yeah, I can't no, um, I, um, I, once a week, my printer kicks out a letter to my congresswoman and um, my uh, state representative. I send a letter to the... ATF main office in Jacksonville. I send it to the comment listed on the uh, comment section for the um, the ammunition ban, the one that's specifically for the people that are addressing that. And I send a CC to their home office in Washington D.C. So Very it's kind of shock. I have somebody that does that. I mean, not like I do it. It's it's like okay, make sure this happens. You have people. Yes, I have people. That's they're, like unpaid, they're like unpaid interns, but better. 
Listen, if you go to NRAILA.org, and every single gun owner in this country should be a member of the NRA, period. You don't have any excuses. None. But if you go to NRAILA.org, there's in the top, on the top of the website, right? The very top, it says, uh, write a letter to your congressman to prevent the ATF from banning yep. M855. I mean, right there, you can't miss it. Yep. And just click on the link like anybody can do it. Yeah. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm doing all that stuff, and when other people, uh, I haven't made any videos. This will be my first video touching on that subject. But what I've, I think there's a lot of guys with good videos out there, and I've been liking it, sharing it out, and all that kind of stuff, and sharing sharing all the links and everything around, trying to get right. the conversation going. The, the thing is, Hank, is a lot of people, you know, we, we work with a lot of YouTube guys, right? And there's a lot of YouTube guys out making videos on this subject. And we're all preaching to ourselves. We can Every gun owner in America, all 90 million freedom-loving gun-owning Americans can make a YouTube video about this subject. But until people put pen to paper and put that piece of paper in the mailbox, it doesn't make a damn. Yeah, that's what those guys pay attention to. Right. If people, if Stacks you, if of paper. If you're willing to send in that letter, they know you're willing to go vote. And at the bottom of every letter... Right? In your congressman, it doesn't matter if you agree or disagree, at the bottom of every single letter, put, please reply, and put your address. Please send your reply to this address. So all that mail, that paper mail, someone, the U.S. congressman has to have a staff member to open that mail. They have to open it, and then they have to sit down and type out and mail you a letter back. Okay, so that's a good point. If you put, please reply on there. Please reply, right? Eventually, eventually... You know, you would think that if, if you've got 600,000 gun owners in your district and you get 600,000 letters a week, you know, you want to pack that office full of pro-American, pro-gun, pro-freedom literature that they're forced to read and reply to you. And that's how you make a difference. And that's how every person watching this video can make a difference. Right. Okay, very good. Alex, you got anything to add to that? Yeah, you know, to add to, to what everybody's saying, uh, to the skeptics out there who think that that kind of thing doesn't make a difference, I've written a letter... One time before I was an FFL SOT, I was frustrated with the NFA wait times. If you guys remember, NFA wait times at one period were exceeding a year, which to me was just ridiculous. You know, they cash your $200 check like that, and then a year later you get your stamp that says it's okay to pick up your suppressor. So what I did is I wrote a letter to my congressman, and then within two weeks I had my stamp back in my mailbox for an SPR. <laughs> That's awesome. Squeaky wheel, Squeaky so wheel kinda, brother. I'm not. You know, that, that might have been a fluke. They would never actually say that it wasn't. But uh, I'm kind of thinking that that was an example of somebody made a call to somebody and said, "Hey, we're getting a lot of a lot of letters and a lot of complaints. This guy here said <laughs> this because it came in my mailbox so, about six months before <laughs> before it should have." Somebody so picked up cool. the phone at uh, your congressman's office and said, "Hey, um, what the what the fuck over?" And they went, "Oh, oh, we're sorry. Be, we're just going to send it out." Oh, Christian. Yes, sir. That's my, that's my yes. only real experience. That, my uh, grandmother might watch this. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Um, another thing is I do have an article in the works right now. If they do ban M855 projectiles, which I'm hot pulled projectile, I'm holding it right here. An M855 projectile is nothing more than a 62 grain projectile with steel and then a very mild lead core, and that's really all there is to it. Now it is possible, as we all know, to make projectiles, you can either cast them and then, you know, you can't with a rifle, obviously it's too fast, it would melt the bullet before it got out of the bore but what you can do is there's a process called bullet swaging where you make your own jacket I'm writing an article right now on how to make your own projectile and if you want, you can get some model paint from your local Hobby Lobby shop and paint the tips green if you want to make yourself feel better and have a whole bucket full of uh, <laughs> green projectiles so look for that on the firearm blog, that's coming up soon yeah. I'm old school, Sharpie, man. Let me know you when you put that up. Well, so hold on. Are you putting that up only if we get the ban? It doesn't. If the ban goes, you know, it's going to go up either way. I mean, because oh, I think it's still kind of cool, good information to have. Okay, and what do we do if we get the ban? Does anyone know? what? If we get to that point now where they come out with that, and then what? Oh, if the ban comes out and they say you can't make your own M855 project. M855 projectiles, then don't make it, but it's not illegal to have that information. Yeah, no, but what what if we actually get the, the ban on the M855? We won't be able to sell it. We won't be able to sell it. Oh, okay. Possession so will still be okay, right? 
Yeah. No so post de facto I, shit. Okay. So here's the thing. If you, if you were to make your own MiG-55 projectiles and then you put them aside, and then for some reason the ATF found out you had a bunch of them that you made, who says you didn't make them before the ban? Right. right. It takes a lot of effort. Yeah, it, it is a lot it, of it effort. Does, it does. Swaging and bullying. And... You know what? This is all, this is all like the, um, and I'm going to say this for you, Jacob, the stabilizer brace, because I know you don't want me to say the SIG brace. We, we already... We already went there before, and I got chewed out about that. This is like the whole stabilizer brace thing, right? Right. I mean, well, the stabilizing brace, you know, it's 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 there. There's an opinion letter out right now, and the ATF sent an opinion letter out that was, you know, it didn't say it was banned. It didn't say it was illegal. Uh, we sell them every day. We've only sold them as stabilizing braces. Uh, they've never been sold as 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 anything other than a stabilizing brace. And uh, we're continuing to sell stabilizing braces for those people that uh, have a problem holding a gun with two hands and need to need to hold a uh, need a medical device to help them shoot better. A medical device for the children. It is a medical yeah. device. It is. Children. It is a it for is a children. medical device. Yeah. For the children. Yeah. If you, well, you, you know, I'm if you guys really have met Rick, the the vet that it was designed for, uh, right. that that kind of got the whole thing started, like, um, you know. Uh, it it really actually is a is a medical device is designed by a guy that makes uh, uh, fake legs and arms and stuff and that's that's where it came from. Yeah, Rick is the guy who won the the uh, Century Arms AK from you guys, right? Well, there was a there was a guy that won it and he gave it to Rick. Actually, Rick just happened to be standing there, but Rick's a vet and uh, he. Uh, you know the kind of he well, Rick got injured in combat and he only has one arm and they developed the stabilizing brace where he can shoot a rifle caliber pistol comfortably and easily and and that's where it came from yeah and he's a you know he's a good guy and uh, that's the truth there's a lot of guys out there like Rick that really do need this and we and we don't want to get you know into any issues there and there's and there's people all in between you know there's the extreme case and then there's other people that may need it so you guys are still making them you're still selling them right yep one of our hottest selling items yep okay Cool. I also got some questions in here. You guys are still, I think you said you're selling ammo, so you're still making ammo. You're still Yeah, yeah ammo. we have multiple plants. We have multiple plants across the across the world that, that we certify the ammo as all non-corrosive, and then we still bring in surplus ammunition when it's available. Okay. Um, and then also, uh, I've got some questions. How backed up are you guys on the uh, TP9SA? How long is the back uh, it's deep. If a if it they're they're in distribution, they just run out, and most distribute most major distribution <laughs> places run out about once a month. So oh, we're okay. we're trying to fill the need. We're trying to get them in the stores, but as it becomes more popular, it's kind of a snowball effect. Um, I know that every distributor I had was out twice last month waiting on a shipment. Oh, okay. So that's a, that's a good thing for you guys, not so good for the guys who are out there waiting. Now, I've got another question. There's people who want to know, are you still producing the Golani Sporter Rifles? Uh, no. No. Okay, no. Well, there's, your, there's your answer. Now, what about this? I told you about this before. Do you, do you recognize this? Is that, the, is that the bullpup? Yeah, this is an AK-74 bullpup. <laughs> I love, Jacob, I mean, you click. Make me so I'm using my phone, right? I'm using my phone, and I gotta click on the screen, the little screen, to see you, to see you get bigger. Here you go. So here yeah. we go. Ed. This is a uh, Sentry Arms AK-74 Sporter bullpup. I love this thing. You know, except Jacob, for the, if you, can, the if you can find one of those laying around, I'd love to have it. I'm gonna let Alex talk about the bullpups. I'm sure he's more well versed in them than I am. <laughs> yeah, but that Jacob one's does cool. Not like but that one's cool. That one's not shitty. I handled that one. It's real nice. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Are we, you we don't. We don't make those anymore either. Yeah. <laughs> you never again. <laughs> I'm not. I'll never get rid of mine. Jacob tried to get mine from. I was like, Jacob, you. You forget it, man. You're not. You're not getting this for nothing. Alex, what do you think about bullpups? Uh, bullpups as a whole, I really like the concept. I have yet to find one with a trigger that I would deem acceptable. <laughs> Recently. Uh, no, that's a universal problem. It, it all jumps to it. I actually did an article where I tested, let's see here, uh, trigger, yep. I titled the article Trigger Pulls, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. And, of course, 
I tested over 25 modern sporting rifles. And uh, I'm punching the article up in the little chat group chat thing right now. Um, there we I go. I tested over 25 different firearms. Okay. And of course, the bullpups yeah, came up cool. last. So I what, can put a Beretta Air X100 rifle that actually came out dead last. The, the oh. Air X100 has a worse trigger. Okay. So which bullpups did you test in that, Alex? Um, I actually tested, let's see, there's a graph at the bottom that basically shows all of your basic bullpups. Okay, there is the Tabor, the Audi FS2000, and then a little-known bullpup known as the M17S. I believe a company has resurrected the M17S now mm. as the... Really? Yeah, okay. I don't know what it's what they resurrected. Oh, land war that, was the land that was a Land Warrior weapon, right? That was a Bushmaster, uh, no, the first Bushmaster. Um, K and M yeah, Arms has a uh, M17S, which has an AR trigger in it. Of of actually, that's right. K and M is K and M has basically tried to fix all the problems inherent to the platform, and they've done a pretty good job, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I like. Now, Alex, did you shoot a full auto uh, AUG with a linear trigger, where you just keep yeah, pulling it back I, and it goes? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, a progressive trigger. I've got one right over there. Um, but it's a, that wasn't you know, part of the. Like that wasn't part of the. The test pack. Oh, I know. Um, I, sure I shot. I shot a military sure AUG. <laughs> yeah. Um. The, uh, the only AUG I have any experience with was one that um, Secret Service had, and they let us play with it one time. And I have to say, the trigger on that one was pretty stellar for a for a anything. But yeah. that was that's that was in the uh, nineties. Yeah, no, that's and that uh, linear you know, trigger, like Jacob's talking about. You just keep it buried back, and it's the it's it's, it's okay. I mean, it's not yeah. an AK trigger. You're right. Yeah, the uh, no bullpups bullpup triggers, and I don't get along. But bullpups as a whole, and I, we're all right. I guess it's the, the action was originally designed about around it, and it doesn't have to have all those weird wires and transfer bars and levers and springs and shit to stuff to make the trigger work back there, the original trigger group. I guess like uh, if it's designed like that from the get-go, then uh, I guess those compromises don't creep in like they do when you're taking an SKS or a, a Mac 90 or a, a AR-15 platform or Ruger 1022 or whatever you're bullpupping this week with a kit. Um, if it's designed for it from the beginning, it doesn't seem to suffer from the the problems of the aftermarket stuff. Yeah. Does that make so, any sense? So, um, yeah, that I I understand that. So, Alex, um, so your conclusion on that report was what? Bullpups suck. Uh, of all the guns that won, or the gun that won surprised me the most. <laughs> That's the Falmet M76, I believe. Um, the M76 being a an, an RK62. In 5.56, I mean the trigger pull on that thing was uh, let's see, three pounds, 2.5 ounces, and that's an AK variant. So, wow, that was something. I've got an uh, I've got an ancient like Mac the call, 90. The average was uh, six pounds. Did you shoot a Mac 90? What well, I'm sorry. Oh, what's the old ch did you ever shoot? Did you can in your your testing? Did you shoot a Mac 90, MAK 90, the Chinese AK 7.62 variant? Uh, we did not. Uh, the AKs we tested were two Russian AKs, a Galil, and then an M76 Valmet. Um, you should have tested I our have, new AK. Yes, your new AK is sweet. Of all the AKs I've oh, ever had, yeah. I've got an old Mac 90 that I bought. as a. There were three of them in a box from uh, Jerry Sports South back in the day. And uh, I kept one of them, and I've had it for probably about 20 years now, and that's got the sweetest AK trigger of any AK I've ever owned, including Arsenal. Alex, was that a post sample? Post sample. Which one? Was your M7? Was your 76 a uh, original uh, uh, Sako, you know, Finland Valmet? Yeah. yeah, that was a uh, that was a straight off the boat Valmet. No, uh, you know, no pre, no 89 band uh, Valmet. So Who was uh, it full was auto or semi? No, no, that was just a semi off the boat. So that was there. That was Valmet's semi-auto trigger. I wish okay. it was a. Uh, I wish it was a transferable. That would make me a happier man. But. Much happier, right? They're nice. The, the 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 dealer samples on those are really nice as well. There's a lot of good triggers on on assault rifles out there. It's just not necessarily here in America. Sure, sure. Um, and you know, let's face it. The, 
it makes a lot of sense to have a six pound, seven pound trigger in a military rifle. I mean, there's a lot of good yeah. reasons for that. You don't want a, uh, I mean, the Swiss being the exception, pretty much everybody goes with a six to seven pound trigger these days. Right. Yeah. Um, in the unlikely event that you catch a glove or, you know, something simple on the trigger Stick. or breathe on it wrong, it won't go off. Stick. Yeah, a stick, as people, you know, it happens, so. It Hank, do we have any more that's... questions? Yeah, so um, now you, you you wanted to mention a trigger that you guys have, right? You guys have a new trigger from Sentry Arms, right, for your AKs? We have a new AK trigger, yeah. Really? We have the Rack 1 trigger. Yeah, it's uh, it's got a two-stage feel to it. It's actually a single-stage double-hook trigger. Um, the list of improvements over the current trigger and triggers we've used in the past are about two pages long. Uh, they designed this from the ground up as a semi-automatic, every single part as a semi-automatic AK trigger. So you get a two-stage feel. It's it's really a single-stage trigger. It's really smooth. The way the metal's formed, everything just kind of goes together really great. But it still has got that AK reliability. And we have them that we're putting in all the RAS and C39 guns. And then those same triggers will go in a Wasser or an Arsenal or a you know any of our competitors' rifles, and then we also uh, probably 45 days from now we'll be releasing the same trigger for all the NPAP, OPAP, M85, M90, okay. a lot so of I triggers. Mean, yeah, I've, I've run that trigger. I don't know if anyone else here, uh, maybe Christian has, but it was it actually is a cool trigger. Jacob just has to send me one. I've got a 74 right here behind me. We'll test it out. Yeah. We'll get you one out. The, the main thing about it is, you know, it's a, it's a nice trigger. It's probably the best AK trigger in the world, um, and it retails at 39 bucks. You know, we're not in the trigger-making business. We're in the rifle-making business, and the trigger, we just put a good trigger on the market to, to help people out, you know, because a better trigger makes you shoot better, more reliable trigger. You know, I'm not going to well, try to charge your... somebody 80 bucks for a trigger. This 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 is the uh, this is so that you can uh, eliminate the uh, supplier problems with the competitor that we were using for 922R compliance, right? I mean, this is a, There's this is a way been a bunch of people make triggers. Out. You know, this is well. When you design a, a rifle from the ground up, the RS-47 and the C-39V2 right. were designed from the ground up in-house at Century. So uh, to to you keep all the quality and to keep yeah, we can control right. that. And also, you know, the the older triggers, the 922 triggers, a lot of them, if you look at it, and Alex can probably tell you as an SOT, they're, those original molds, like way back in the day, were modified full auto parts that they kind of cut and molded. And if you look, you can actually see where they molded that stuff. And so we designed one from the ground up, you know, where an AK trigger normally is, you know, 8 to 15 pounds, whatever you happen to get out of the box. These things consistently break at like 6.5 they're smooth. You don't have to file, put any kind of lube. They come out of the box ready to go. Um, you don't have to do anything to it. CNC? And it's a, it's a. Uh, they're <laughs> they they're, they're cast. They cast or mem or they're cast. Yeah, or they're cast. They're, they're cast. There's nothing wrong with yeah. that. Yeah. Nothing um, wrong with there's, that. For there's what some doing cast and some. There's some cast and some forged parts. Different parts work better in different ways. Yeah, so engineering didn't just say we're going to use all cast or all forged. It's it's a mixture of those parts regardless of what stress goes on each one. Yeah, I mean, you engineer for that. Some stuff, it's it's more appropriate to have a cast piece. I'm a I'm a welder and a uh, metal guy, so yeah. Right. Uh, some things it just works better cast, and some things it, it depending on the shape and what the composition needs to be, it's just easier and and better to do it in a machine. And Alex, you guys get guns from us, right, for a review? Oh yeah, yeah. You guys uh, were one of our earlier so, suppliers. Look uh, forward to seeing it. Yeah, we, we'll get uh, we you guys a, some triggers out. Well, we'd love to have. Them. Hey, Jacob. Jacob, uh, I've still got those. Um, uh, still got guys on me about the path. I've got to start. I've got to work out that truck gun scabbard thing. Uh, yeah, I understand. Just get me offline or whatever. I'm just those, and I want. I want to build those, especially for the. Uh, I think I got six guys in Camden that carry that path in their truck and want some kind of blaster. Well, scabbard. I'll get you one up. I'll get you one up next month. Oh, Hank, I but meant to tell you while we we're talking about the trigger. I don't okay. know if that trigger will go on a Chinese gun or not. So I'm just gonna be up front. We don't. I don't know if they'll go on a Norinco gun, honestly. Yeah, okay, I was gonna ask you: is it, easy, is it an easy install? I know. Yeah. yeah so easy. it's it's an easy install. Um, you know, it's and Alex can probably elaborate as well on you know AK triggers on semi-automatic AK triggers. Um, you know, they go in pretty easy. They pop out pretty easy. Um, Wassers, in paps, arsenals. You know, all those guns. You can put this trigger in. You know, will your will this trigger work with that Krebs locking plate? 
I mean, is that is that going to work the same rather than using? I have I have no idea. We did not design this trigger with anybody else's accessories in mind, and we don't design our new rifles with anyone else's accessories okay. in mind because honestly, there's never been a spec. There's never been a real right. AK spec right. in America. So we designed right. the best rifle we could, and if it fits, that's great. If it doesn't fit, sorry. That's right. U.S. I, spec, I, I man. Just just go with that. Okay. What was I that, Alex? I assume it would work with the Krebs plate. The Krebs plate's just the Shepherd's crook, but. Yep, same you know, same thickness. And, yeah. It doesn't work with a Krebs safety. Okay. Oh well, there you go. Oh, okay, the safety, yes. no. Yeah. Okay. Well, Jacob, I've got all those pieces. I've got all those pieces and parts here, so uh, we'll uh, we'll do a video and uh, shoot an install. And, and Hank, if you uh, you get those parts and you need a hand, give uh, Chad or I a holler. We're both uh, we're both okay. checked out on the AKs for. Okay, absolutely, we'll do. I've got a few questions coming in here. Let me let me get to those. Uh, First question, and this uh, I think Alex can answer this one probably, or anyone else here. Um, this guy says, "How do I go about acquiring a full auto gun that's pre-ban with all the issues lately?" They'd love Lots to get of money, etc. So how, okay. how how do you do that? I'm sorry, can you, can you elaborate a little bit on the last part of his question? Yeah, they'd like to um, they'd like to acquire a full auto gun that's pre-ban with all the issues lately. Um, as I would love to get one just to have fun. Um, oh, and actually, this person lives in Canada, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I'm sorry, but I, as far as I know about Canadian firearms law, there's three categories of firearms, non-restricted, restricted, and prohibited. They stopped issuing prohibited licenses in the 90s, and those lucky people who have retained them throughout the years can still own prohibited firearms. One of okay. our writers, Eddie O, says it's relatively easy to get a restricted license, which allows you to own pistols and you know certain kinds of rifles. But basically, unless you have a prohibited license, you can't get a, a prohibited gun anymore. Um, unless, I guess, the queen signs a letter on the moon and then hands it to you or something. <laughs> yeah. Like we, that. That's that's right. That's that, Alex is right. We have a facility in Canada, and, and I don't know anyone outside of, you know, very special circumstances that have a prohibitive license. Yeah. So you got to be super special. <laughs> otherwise, you're SOL on that one, right? Right. Yeah, unfortunately. And I know to get a manufacturer's license in Canada, I believe you have to be 30 years old. So basically, anybody that wants to have that kind of cool stuff gets past that point in their life by the time they're eligible, <laughs> um, unfortunately. Yeah. So, um, sorry to our Canadian friend there. Yeah. Here's the other question. This is from David Katz. He says, I live in an AWB state, Maryland, and I was wondering what is a good choice of long gun. I'm not old enough to purchase a handgun. As a jack of all trades, self defense, reaction, etc. So, what's a good self defense long gun that someone can get if they can't actually get a pistol to protect themselves? Shotgun. I would say a 12 gauge. Yeah, shotgun all day. Yeah. Joe Biden was right on yeah. this one. Get yourself a shotgun. Yes, sir. What do you What do you say on that? Uh, I don't. I don't like shotguns. <laughs> no. Right? Like I'm. I'm a. I'm pretty anti hurt. shotgun. Unless you're hunting something that flies through the air, a shotgun. I mean, you got eight, nine rounds. Even with our Furies, our big AK Furies, you got ten rounds. There is. I would rather have a 30-30 lever gun than any riot gun ever produced. Wait, wait, wait. You make a 12 gauge AK pattern shotgun? We do with ten ten round mags. I don't think you can own it in Maryland though, so it's a moot point. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they can come close to that. And I think there's some more gun laws in Maryland about age and stuff. So, I mean, honestly, age, it's age. when it yeah, when it boils down to it, um, you, you know, in my opinion, it, it doesn't matter what gun you have as long as you have some good training. And it's better to have, you know, five or six classes under your belt with a 3030 or an SKS than any rifle and millions of rounds of ammo. Yeah. Now, let me stop you for a quick second here. Um We've got the Don suit. Oh man, what's up, bro? <laughs> Finally. Howdy, dude. Hey, man, going, what's going man? on? <laughs> Long time listener, first time caller. Good to see you. <laughs> what happened to you, Suit? <laughs> My gosh, man, it, I've been fighting this thing to get on here forever. I'm yeah. just glad to be on here. I'm glad I wasn't the only one. And I'm, I've been listening to you guys the whole time, but I've. Been <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's been good. It's been real good. Yeah. You, I still can't get on. Yeah, <laughs> you're on. You're on. Yeah, so I'm on, on my phone. <laughs> I'm on my phone. Yeah, it seems like half the panels. Are, uh, 
You know, I don't know what's going on. Suits, you want to add anything to what we've been saying? Alex, where are you going? He's wandering I'm around. Going out to the shop. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm glad Jacob said he was on his phone because that's what made me go, well, shoot, I'm going to get on my phone. So that's right. It worked. Your cat's down. Yeah. I like those glasses, Suits. <laughs> yeah, I'm about half blind if I don't have them on. Unless <laughs> Jacob, I, I got a question for you. I'm sorry, Suits. Jacob, I got a, a question while we're waiting on Homeboy. Um, MCAT19, dude, I, I, I never type your, Insta, your Instagram right, dude. What is the MKAT19? What, what, so I'm a huge dork, right? Like, I'm a, I'm, a huge, I'm a huge dork. And when I was younger, you know, I played Magic the Gathering, which is like this really dorky card game. And my favorite card, card was, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, was a Mercat, M-E-R-R-K-A-T. And I used that handle for years. And I needed an Instagram handle. I was like, oh, yeah, MCAT G19. Oh, yeah. You know? You're trying, to yeah. Get nerd, you're trying to get nerd credits? Whatever. You just got probably a kajillion nerd credits off that. I, I'll go get, I I'll also get have, I I also, I also have every Star Wars action figure made from 78 to <laughs> 83 and every G.I. Joe ever made. That's I have cool. 100 Tom's that action figures. Yeah. And I had the $6 million man. Okay. That's a, we're, we're getting off the grip. We're getting off the tracks here. Such, do you have a TP9 SA? I think you do because I've seen oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, what do you think about it? I love it. Have you had, has your gun magically decoffed itself? No, and I am so flipping, I'm thinking about <laughs> Jacob's grandmother. I am so <laughs> flipping mad at, about hearing about it. Thank you. And since a couple, since a couple of YouTubers have really gotten on that, I have been hearing all about it, and I've been into fights and everything else about it. I mean, do any of those people a, own the gun? No, no, they don't. And that's the crazy thing. I'll say, have you ever even shot? Have you ever seen one? And most of them are like, well, I just heard, and I said, yeah, I know what video you watched. And I said, you know, that was a very limited video introduction. And I said, but. I said, you have to really mean to push that button. And, in fact, I'm planning on doing a test and getting it out and showing how you've really got to get a hold of it. I mean, what what about the Walder P99? Exactly. I, I don't hear anything about that. So yeah, You, you know, know what I think? I, I think a lot of people don't realize that there's a lot of guys in the uh, gun YouTube trade that are just out there. You know, it's this is a lot of this. It, I, I always relate it to WWE. It's wrestling. There's guys that are just out there just trying to make a name for themselves, uh, jumping on certain things without actually trying out the gun. I've, I actually got a holster from Green Force Tactical, and I've been carrying this thing concealed. My steel-powered fat rolls have not activated this decocker <laughs> yet. I've been carrying it around for about a week. <laughs> yeah, most people are just pissed that my $400 gun outshoots their $800 exactly. gun. Exactly. That's, That's what it boils accurate. down to. Yeah. I thought Ayub was super yeah. impressed with it. He, he he was like this. He was first. He was skeptical. He's like, ah, it's a polymer frame gun. Ah. Then he got out there and started running it. And he's like, this thing really shoots good. And yeah. uh, he acted like he was surprised about it. But I had a customer. Most a people are. Customer. Most people are like, holy yeah. shit. Well, now, I got in a fight with a customer over this decocker. He uh, he ordered an appendix rig and then sent me like 15 follow-up emails because he wanted to be sure that the rig would cover the decocker. <laughs> so that it wouldn't accidentally decock by his, well, in his pants. And... Uh, <laughs> I I actually refunded him. I, I you know, ten two percent of your customers are ninety percent of your problems. So you can tell right away yeah, this guy. Uh, uh. There is a bigger the chance of you knocking the safety off your nineteen eleven yeah. that everybody oh, carries. Yeah. You don't see all these guys going. Oh, the nineteen eleven is dangerous because you might knock the safety off. You have a higher risk of knocking the safety off this the nineteen eleven. Then you do decock in this TP9SA, and at the end of the day, the TP9SA at four hundred dollars is more reliable than any 1911 produced today. I've had zero trouble with this, Jacob, and you know what I do to these things. And right. That's what I was going to ask you. Do you have Do you have a blue gun or any kind of blank over there that you're using to make holsters, or are you using that actual? No, gun? he crushes it on that one. I crush the, <laughs> I crush yeah, so the dog poop out of this one. So um, you're I've, putting. You're putting how much pressure on those guns? Uh, in my steel press, about 44 psi at about 300 degrees. I won't go any more exact, okay. so but about 300. Done. 
Um, well, I made the magazine non-drop free, but uh, Mr. Heat Gun makes the drop free all happy again. <laughs> and okay. the, um, there's a there's a little place inside here with a trigger transfer bar. Um, let's see if I can get this on camera. Right here, as you can see, the uh, the polymer it, when it's smashed this way. The polymer will uh, get happy with the trigger bar sometimes, but again, just warm her up a little bit, it relaxes, <laughs> and trigger's all good again. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've probably done that uh, a dozen times with this gun since I've had it, and it still it still shoots great. I shot it this afternoon before I came out. I, I had to pull all the, all the blocking and stuff off it so I'd be able to shoot it, but... Yeah, it doesn't care, man. It's like Honey Badger. Okay, cool. Now let me just ask Jacob a quick question, and I want to go back to Such. Jacob, are you guys going to make a double single action version of the TP9 SA? Yeah, so the V2 will be out. Uh, it's actually will be available pretty soon. We hope to start shipping, you know, by summer. And the V2 is the the new updated frame, and it's still got the double single action. Okay, so that's coming out soon. Okay, so Such, um, we. Hold on. What what's up, Christian? Will it change the external dimensions of the gun for holsters? Uh, length. Length okay. of frame. The yeah. frame will be different. No length. Of, length. Of, no, it'll be it'll fit. Okay. It'll fit. Know, so what you're gonna have is what you're gonna have is is here where you've got this little uh this little it's it's gonna be this little step down, right here. Hold on. Let me see. Let me blow you up, Jacob. There we go. What little step down are we talking about? Oh, the one in the slide. Yeah. So uh, the little step down here. I'm yeah. Pull out my trusty cold steel uh -huh. Tonto here. You're gonna cut a fucking finger off. It'll be like right here. So it'll be you'll have the same frame length across the front. It just won't have this extended metal part here. Oh, so the, the, the you're shortening up the barrel and slide by that dimension. Yeah. Okay. So it'll be just like if I took a bandsaw and cut it off at the end of the frame there. Yeah. Okay, okay, so this will, the new gun will work in the legacy gun. Uh, if I make a holster with this, it'll work for that. I'll just yeah. have a little clearance at the end. Okay, yep. I, I love you, but I have to make myself big again because I like looking at myself. But um, Now, Jacob, let me address something else that we had. Um, I saw a YouTube video on, and it irritated me. It was talking about these scratches right here on the inside of the slide. Uh, right. Yeah. Let, me, let me tell you, that's a non-fucking issue. Amen. Um, because the... The magazine has clearanced itself to be happy. We call it like a uh, fire lapping procedure. You shoot it enough, the magazine stops touching there. Stop touching me. Stop touching me. See, it's self talking Yeah, mine's got it too. Yeah, it's not an issue, dude. If there's a round so, in the magazine, it holds it off there. Yeah. So what we've uh, what we've determined is is the, there was a little a little height issue there with the mag. And uh, it doesn't affect function. We've had no guns returned because of it. Uh, and during all of our QC testing, we never had a we never had a an issue with the gun not functioning. It it doesn't affect the function of the gun at all. Period. Um, and so we just consider it, you know, part of normal wear and tear on this on this design. Yeah, okay. I, I've noticed the only time that appeared. I when I first got this gun, I shot the shit out of it, and this the little scrapey scrape thing didn't appear. And I was like, well, I must be lucky. But cycling the gun a gazillion times with an empty magazine in it for molding, that's when I seem to pick up those scratches. I think a live round in the magazine holds the magazine down against the deep end of the, the mag release, and it doesn't touch. But if you have your gun empty right. and shit and just keep cycling it, cycling it, cycling it, cycling it, yeah, you I've got it. I've got about 2,000 rounds through this one. Through this, yep. this is my actual personal gun that I had at the... Um, the shoot, as you can see, it's still got where I wrote my name on the side of it, and uh, it's got that. It's got where it rubbed that spot, but it, that spot doesn't. It doesn't affect the functionality of the gun any period. It's out. It's out of the way of everything. It doesn't do anything. It's like it's right. not an issue for me. It's like the decocker. Cool. So let me let me go to a um, to a viewer question here, and I'm gonna point this towards Such because folks out there want to hear from Such since he came in a little late. Such, what man. do you think about? What do you think about the ammo ban, and uh, what round, what kind of ammo do you think they're going to go after next? Well, you know, this really opens up the, the floodgates, really. <coughs> because any, I mean, we've done a lot of testing on ballistics, and, you know, you can shoot through any of that soft body armor with any rifle caliber. Yep. 
So what are they going to do next? I mean, we've got 308, you know, pistols now. We've got AK, you know, 7.69 pistols. I mean, you know, what are they going to start testing that? I mean, what's next? And, you know, the law clearly, well, the law clearly states that anything made for a rifle caliber is legal. They can't ban that. I mean, that is the law. And so, That's correct. you know, we have got to, and, and Jacob was right, you got to get on these different websites and get this stuff done. Now, one thing that I've done, I haven't made a video yet because there were so many that came out initially. But I'm getting ready. In fact, I meant to make it this afternoon, but I had a little issue. My, I had to help my daughter with something. But I'm getting ready to make a video, hopefully tomorrow afternoon, and just blast it out there because we've just got to keep fighting. Because if, if we don't stop this, there's going to be something next. Just like that pistol uh, place. And just like, you know, what's next on the ban? And I'll tell you, I mean, and they're coming at us not only on the gun front, but in every other area. But we've, our deal and the influence we have is to stop this gun idiocy from what they're doing. And we've got to get together and join together and really fight it. We've, we've got to do it because this is a matter of life and death. I mean, it really is. In the long That's run. right. So Amen. You know, I, I'm just, I am fired up about it. And I am, you know, I'm just, we've got to get really serious about it. So yeah, next so, it'll be nine millimeter. Yes. Is it, is it sounding chairman. like we need to call some kind of summit here, have some marches? I mean, <laughs> that's the point we've gotten to. What do, what do you think, Alex? What are they going to ban next? Um, you know, I'm more worried about the lead ban in California. If you ban yep. lead bullets, the ATF has also stated that a combination of copper, beryllium, tungsten, etc. is armor piercing. So, <laughs> if you ban everything that a bullet can be made out of, then what the hell are we going to shoot with? I mean, we all just, I mean, is Hank Strange just going to be all about City archery at that? <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll, obsidian, we'll fight you know. some obsidian bullets out. We'll go that way. So, you know, if it's if lead goes, if the EPA has their way and lead goes, then it's going to be, we're going to all have to use Barnes copper bullets, and that's going to increase the cost of bullets by five times. I mean, that's, it's, it's, every single one of those yeah. bullets is made almost, <laughs> it's ridiculous what goes into making them, and, and when you apply that, to you every know what? Single we're, time. we're laughing about it a little bit here, but it really is. I mean, <laughs> th this seems to be the set strategy. And if people don't really get their act together, and then in the next, in the coming up elections, you know, you've got Hillary trying to be the next president and all that kind of stuff. They're just going to keep piling on with this, and it's yeah, not yeah. Really such a laughing matter anymore. Because yeah, we're going to come to a point where there is no affordable round that you'll be able to shoot. And a lot of guys say, well, I don't care because I've got all the ammo I need, and that's how we always get into trouble because people worry about being yeah, grandfathered in. And the lead ban is a very real thing. They've already, they've already banned lead in California for use in hunting or something like that, so they've got their foot in the door with a lead ban that could produce, or could progress to a total lead bullet ban. Didn't uh, Jerry Brown like veto that or say he wasn't going to have anything to do with that lead ban? I, mean, I know it was running around kind of a foot. I'm almost, you know, I'm almost sad to say this, but I almost turn a blind eye when it comes to California gun politics. Well, me too, dude. I'm one of those people who's like, well, it doesn't affect because it's so far out there. But so often, California gun politics tend to bleed out, you know, east, and that scares the hell out of me. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's why I hope that, um, you know, like what we have with cafe standards, where California makes the auto industry build cars and it's, oh. it's up the price of cars. I hope that the uh, gun manufacturers don't go that route. Jacob, do you guys build guns specifically for California? Uh, we have uh, California compliant AKs. So <clears throat> right now we build our standard line of AKs. Uh, we put a bullet button on it. So that goes over the mag release, and you have to have a tool to take the mag out, and we ship them with 10-round mags. Okay. So how does that look at from, I mean, from the manufacturer point of view? There's... Is it costing you guys more to do all to build for California? Uh, we just up. I mean, we upcharge to the California market for that. Um, now the TP9SA will not be sold in California due to micro stamping. They're still trying to overturn that. So you're slowly seeing handgun after handgun fall off the list. Anything that's not CNR. So you know our biggest sales to Californian handgun market are the surplus stuff: P64s, Walthers, Beretta 71s. Um, all the 50 plus year old curio and relics that people are clamoring for because they even, you know, they can get a handgun permit. A lot of counties in California will issue you a valid concealed carry permit. It's only, you know, the, the liberal strongholds where they hate freedom that you can't get one. San Francisco, LA County, 
Um, those areas, it's harder, but when you get in north, like past Robles and Monterey, and you know, you, can, you get a handgun permit there, those guys can't find anything to carry. You know, it, I was talking to Rafi over at Bursa, and he said they brought back the Firestorm 380. Uh, because and they discontinued it just where they could have a that pistol for sale in California because it hadn't fell off the list yet. And every been. year Californians are losing more and more pistols off their list because of the the complex, inane, crazy laws that that government is putting on freedom loving Americans in that state. So I mean, you got guys in California carrying, you know, they're carrying fifty year old commie handguns. They're carrying nineteen elevens from World War Two, you know, old school revolvers. Oh. I got a friend of mine out there, and he said his next move is he's going to start carrying a Lamat. <laughs> Firefly fan, obviously. He's dead. Yeah, right. <laughs> a blunder. Dual wheel. Yeah. I'm Carry a here. Colt 1851 conversion, right, with a snake engraved on the handle. That's right. That's Ride right. the river with a gun like that. That's I mean, right. Happen, oh, Confederate happen, Army black powder. Confederate yeah, Navy brass uh, ring. What would happen if gun manufacturers like just said, you know what, forget California, we're not going to make any guns for them? Are, you, are the gun manufacturers going to lose out? Are Californians? Well, you know, a lot of manufacturers now, a lot of the bigger manufacturers are, are publicly traded companies, right? So you can't, <laughs> the shareholders at the end decide because a lot of companies have been sold out. But just like Turkey, you know, developed the TP9SA, mm -hmm. You know, the you know the state of California could develop their own handgun if they wanted to. You know, if if they because they oh, can do effectively. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Say that. Like a camel. You know, the you got to understand the state of California has no no value or respect of U.S. federal laws. You can it is illegal to smoke marijuana in this country, right? And the state of California legally lets its citizens smoke all the marijuana they want. I mean, I'm Not paraphrasing, correct. right? But it's against the law. It's against federal law, and California says you can do it. Uh, the federal law says one thing, and California completely goes against it. So even if we removed all gun laws in this country, um, I have no doubt that California would still make every gun law they could. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? I would. I would not like to see. Um, I would not like to see California design a gun. Uh, Such, do you want to interject anything here, man? I know well, you. I, I agree with Jacob. They're going to, you know, California is going to do what California does. But here's the thing, I guess, that bothers me the most about it is, you know, those Californians that are gun-loving people are still Americans, you know? And, I mean, so I, I want to help them fight as much as they can for what – and, you know, and if possible, restore. But, I mean, I know that may be a pie dream, but, you know, I, I just – I hate what it's doing. And, you know, and I understand because it's getting too expensive. Yeah. To, to cater to California. I mean, if you got a micro stamp pistols, that's just too expensive. And, and, and nobody's doing micro stamp. No. I mean, well, you can't do it. I've got yeah. a file in 30 seconds for a micro stamped uh, firing pin. Well, it and wears off. I mean, it's a yeah, moot point. I mean, it wears it, off. To, to start with, it's it's dumb. You know, the, the, the supposition that criminals aren't going to do that when they're already Dremel tooling the serial numbers off the side of the gun, like, they're not going to learn the first time Ray Ray goes to jail on a micro stamp beef that they got to take the Dremel and run it over wherever the micro stamping is. And well, there's no there's no micro stamp technology, so it's like you right. can't. Yeah. You know. Absolutely, there's no way to do it in production. But even if they did, the the they're they're working on a flawed supposition that it'll actually do anything. Anything that you can micro stamp or could theoretically micro stamp. 30 seconds with a Dremel tool, and you wasted all that time in engineering. And, and you know what also I think is going to happen here? They're going to go over to a, to a smart gun thing. You know, right now it's micro stamp is sexy. Then the next thing you know, they'll try this, you know, something that reads your fingerprint or whatever, and they're going to just keep fooling around with those kinds of things that just are totally impractical and don't make any sense and probably going to make you lose your life if you really need to defend your life. I mean... Is there really anything that we can do about California? Realistically, well, you know, research hey, earthquakes. Here's the deal: as far as with firearms being used, it, typically they're stolen, so it doesn't make a hill of beans if they've been microstamped, serial numbered, whatever. Yep. The ones yep. that are used in crime, and a lot yep. of people that are doing these capital crimes where they're shooting their families or they want. They don't care anyway. I mean, they're usually shooting themselves at the end of the, the whole shooting match anyway. Yep. So, 
I mean, to me, this whole thing is just control. That's all it's about. That's all they care about. And they want to get guys like us who are going to follow the law, who aren't going to go out and do something stupid. I mean, right. that, those are the people that, and they know it. Don't think they don't know it. They know what they're doing. It's I mean, you can get up. Go ahead. Just everybody carry a black powder, man, in California. Just, <laughs> you know, it goes you back to, to it goes one of those. Yeah, it goes back to training, though, right? Like they want to keep pressuring and pressuring. You can't carry a Glock. You got to do this for a micro stamp. You know, keep pushing and pushing. You know, you can go get a Uberti. I just looked it up. 1849 pocket revolver, man. It's a 36 caliber Colt clone. You know, I if you practice enough, hey, you're you know, you can defend your life or the life of somebody else with anything. You just got to want it bad enough. That's yeah. right. I've yeah. got one of those Uberti's, and I love shooting it. I just hate cleaning it. No, I would too, but you can be rest assured if I couldn't have a Glock, if I couldn't buy a modern handgun, oh, yeah. and and I'd be toting a black powder. Yeah, do whatever you can do. That's that's what it comes down to. Whatever you know, whatever you need to do, what you feel you need to do to defend yourself, that's what you need to do. Because if you're not here anymore, there's no reverse button on death. You know, Take we don't it. have that. Right. We don't want to develop that yet. Take we can't bring you back. So. I mean, what would you do if some dude started chasing you down the street with a five-pound Colt Walker replica that shot a forty-four <laughs> grain, That's you know, with a hundred a hundred grains of black powder, and it made a cloud that the room had to clear before he could take another shot at you? You're gonna run away. I'd shoot him a fire. SA. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Jake, oh, you need to bring back the pepper box, like a six-shot pepper box. Whatever it takes, you know, a one saying, shot, man. a single-shot rifle, single-shot rifle is better than no rifle. Uh, you know, a black powder revolver is better than no handgun. That Alex, I think that would be a, a really great article. I don't know if you guys have thought about that. What's the best handgun for protection in a place like a communist state like California? Um, well, okay, that's a good question. Um, you know, sticking with the the antique theme. Federal law states that any firearm made before 1898 is not a firearm. Now, there was a lot of cool guns made before 1898 that fire metallic cartridges, uh, including the, the broom handle Mauser. Uh, yep. If you had a lot of money, yep. you could get a war chart pistol. Hell yeah. Uh, so there's a whole lot of sci-fi looking old fantastic firearms. That Schofields. Yeah, Lamont. I'm, I'm going, I'm, I've been thinking about Lamont. 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 Shotgun <laughs> underneath. If you want twenty, if you want a twenty gauge shotgun wow. and six shots of, uh, yeah. you know, whatever they were chambered in, there you go, Lamont revolver. Oh yeah, <laughs> pow, pow, pow. This ain't fucking working. Boom. Or if you just had a, uh, you know, a seventy five caliber flintlock. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And you that's, carry that's, two. That's, yeah. <laughs> carry a dozen. Hell, they're cheap, right? <laughs> Yeah. All right. So here's oh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go down the line because we're it's at 8:30. So I'm gonna start with Alex. Any uh, final comments, Alex? What this over? Uh, yeah. Where's my where's my T and E unit? Yeah. Okay. So that's for Jacob. Jacob, make sure you get <laughs> Alex a T and E, man. Come on. The firearm blog should already. How can you let Hank Strange have a TP9 SA? Well, you know what? Forget it. I'm not sending them mine. So. <laughs> you don't want mine. <laughs> you know, I'm sure we, our T and E guy Phil White, I'm sure probably has one in the works. It, it might just not be going to me. We have a lot of great writers who will do the pistol justice in a review. I, yeah. I can guarantee that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There's some cool guys at the Firearm Blog. I'm a fan of that. All right, Christian, any final words from you, my friend? I'm gonna stick with the theme. Jacob, send me some shit to break, bro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like to break stuff. You're gonna get a lot of that, Jacob. I sense that. Okay, Such, man, you, you came in late, so we're going to let you have the floor. Anything you want to add? How's that cigar? What kind of cigar are you smoking? Part of the guy's it? black label, and I'm not even smoking it. Jacob knows I'm just chewing on it. Oh, I've got my, hum my humidor back here. I've been, uh, I've been lighting up the Romeo Churchills lately. Oh, nice. there you go. Nice. That's nice. Oh, boy. Okay, uh, I know nothing about any of that stuff. I don't even know what you, you know. Such Romeo's are good. Dude could be smoking a blunt. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't even know the yeah, difference. Yeah, no. He might be in not Colorado. Who knows? Not on live chat. Uh, <laughs> no, not on live chat. No, The big thing is we've got to stand. We've got to really get serious and keep pushing this thing with the ammo. I mean, we've got to be yeah. serious about it. Yeah. And, uh, that's, and that, that's, that is the key because without ammo, 
and you know, and what what's next? The other thing about the ammo is, is people are running out here and buying all the 556 and all the 223 off the shelves. Yep. So, and you know, I don't know who has enough ammo. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, yeah. I've got a lot of ammo, but it isn't enough. No, so, no. And you know what? You should. This is not. This is. I mean, obviously, I can't tell someone to not buy it if they feel they need to buy it or they haven't bought any. But you know, it's kind of like the stock market thing. You know, buy low, sell high. If 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 prices are going up, I don't know. I'm sure this prices are going up right now with everyone. Um, I know some stores that are not pushing up their prices, not yet, but. You know, if you don't really need it, don't go out there and just make the situation worse necessarily. But, you know, the thing is, people are going to do it. And, you know, it's like yeah. my brother. He ran out and bought a case of ammo the other night as soon as he heard about it, which was great. And I'm glad he did. And, uh, and you know, and people, human, the thing is, self-defense is a basic human right. Whether you live in California, whether you're, you, whatever. And you know what? We need to be able to protect ourselves with the highest technology available. Okay. And unfortunately, if it gets down to black powder, that's what it is. But I'm going to fight tooth and nail against that. The other Amen. thing I want to say to Jacob, because everybody's giving him a rough time. Jacob, you guys are doing a fantastic job over there. I'm going to tell you, I just, I'm just more and more impressed with what you guys are doing. Thanks, so, brother. Thank, we appreciate that. Well, really, thanks for what you're doing. This TP9 is fantastic. Great and, um, and I've done a lot of comparison stuff with it and, you know, and it's it's just a fantastic pistol, and I'm you know in the in the V2 model I know is going to be excellent too, but uh, y'all just keep doing what you're doing. Absolutely, I agree with that. All right, Jacob, uh, you know I agree with what Such is saying there. You guys, you know, since you have come on board yeah. in the last 15 months, <laughs> there has been a turnaround in Sentry Arms. I'm just shouting out all the Sentry Arms people out there, you know, watching Jacob. They're like, what's going on? Jacob's on TV or something. He's on the internet. Any last words, Jacob? <laughs> uh, you know, I appreciate that. It, it, you know, it takes a, a whole village, though. You know, we've got a great team. Uh, we've got a great ownership uh, group that uh, the family really takes care of us. Uh, my engineering staff is, 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 you know, excellent, excellent engineers. Everybody from the assemblers in the plant, the guys that pack the boxes. Uh, Dina works her uh, rear end off there in the Florida office. I've got some great That's sales great. guys, and, and we've hired a bunch of awesome new customer service. People want to give them a shout out. They've been busting it, man, because we've been busy. And a lot of people have a lot of questions, a lot of first time gun owners. And, uh, you know, we appreciate all the business, you know, from Century Arms and myself. I, I appreciate the business. I appreciate people taking this pistol and believing me when I say when you pull the trigger, it's going to go bang. You know, that's that's me putting myself on the line saying, hey, this is a good piece, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I appreciate it. And the next video we're going to do, we're going to have Christian make us a. Inside the waistband holster for an 1851 cap and ball. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to tote it. that thing. Appendix. I've done it, brother. Christian can supply everyone with holsters. Listen, I, I, um, you know, yeah. you don't often see representatives of manufacturers, especially those really big guys like Century Arms, come on here. And it really, you know, I want to thank everyone for being on the panel, Alex, Christian, Such, but... You know, Jacob, it's a it's a cool thing that you came on. Guys don't, you know, companies don't do it. They should do it more often. I do agree with you that you know there is there has been a turnaround in my mind, and I've seen the comments in my videos. I'm sure other guys have seen that at Century Arms. Yeah, it's 180 degrees, man. The the quality yeah. coming out of there now is on par with anybody, if not better. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. So you know, we want to thank you for coming on. Keep making guns. Keep making it better. You know, we don't expect everything to be perfect. We don't think everyone should go out there and buy every gun. You know, you're obviously going to make lots of different variations. You're doing a good job, man. Thanks, Bye. guys. All right. So everyone stay where they are. I'm going to sign off. I'm going to thank everyone out there in the interwebs on YouTube and on Google Plus and all the other things out there for watching this. I'm Heck Strange on behalf of everyone here on the panel. Remember what, what they said. Get out there, fight back, get in touch with your local representatives. Don't let this stuff go through, guys, okay? Keep fighting the good fight. Thanks a lot. We are Audi 5000. <laughs>